So um, I just want to tell a quick story. So when I, when I got to JMU, people don't know I transferred in from a junior college in Kansas. And so I started the spring semester. The thing about the spring semester is that everybody comes that weekend and then you start school on Monday. And so I didn't know anybody. I just had the coach's number and he gave me my college roommate number. So I get there on Sunday night not knowing anybody and um, I text my roommate and he was like all right this is how you get to the dorm and so we introduce each other ourselves to each other and uh, I'm, I'm just chilling in the dorm with him right and um, he leans over to me is like man you want to you want to hit this blunt and um, I never smoked weed a day in my life and so not knowing any of my teammates I, I thought to myself, like, if I don't hit this blunt, he gonna go back and tell them, like, man, he, he a lame, this new dude a lame, right? And so I was like, man, all right. And so we went in the back of the dorm room, and um, I didn't even know how to smoke, right? And so I'm, I'm, I'm hitting the blunt or whatnot, and I'm not thinking much about it. I'm like, all right, hopefully I can build a good rapport with my new teammate. And so that Monday morning, I haven't registered for classes or anything yet. I went to the football um, facility, um, and we had a, our, first, our first team meeting. And, and uh, Coach Matthews was our coach at the time. He was doing drug tests. And so when I heard when he was doing drug tests, I, I was so scared. Like I was like about to like poop myself scared. Like, I'd never been like that scared in my life. And I'm like, if I'm the new guy, if I fail a drug test, it's gonna be over before I started. And so the thing about junior college is that a lot of people don't make it out. And I was one of the few, and I was about to throw everything away. And so I say that to say that, um, when I have the opportunity to share my story, I, I try to share it, right? Because in our generation, the older cats didn't talk about college, what's a major, the, the, the peer pressure that you're going to face, the anxiety, how, what's this like balancing academics and, 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 and athletics. People just didn't talk about it. And so this whole podcast idea came up because if you go through something and, and you share it, it's not in vain because somebody else can learn from it. And so that's why we're here and this is episode two of the athlete student podcast and my co-host man is a, is a guy that um legend. yeah a legend like yeah. I, I i respect it. the faith that he has the integrity the, the journalistic perspective that he's been bringing to hampton rose for for 20 years yeah, now um he interviewed me when i was just a, a young pup at, at bayside and then um the star of the event um yeah. a guy that i i admired um for a long time, um, and we, we're here at Salem High School, a place mm -hmm. that he helped pretty much put on the map. And so a, a quick story, um, when I was a freshman, I believe John was a senior. And so this is pre-social media, right? Mm -hmm. And the thing about it, at Bayside High School, people used to be like, have you seen John Gill Chris play? And that's a big deal when, like now they can just hit a button and you know who everybody are. But when your name transferred from school to school, you know this is a, is a big deal. And so I was like, nah, I never seen him play. So my first time coming here, I, I came here to watch him play. And like I said, he left my, 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 my jaw in, in awe, man. Like we had somebody locally that we could look up to. And so um, I'm glad that you decided to be a part, be a part of this. And, and when I was researching some of the things that you've been through, so you were, you were um, triple A state player of the year, your junior year, you led Salem to a, a state championship. Your senior year, you averaged 28 and six, and you only had one turnover per game. You was the top five point guard in America. And so when you hear stuff like that, what, what goes through your mind? Do you ever reflect on it? I know you're a humble guy, but what do you think when you hear those type of numbers? And um, you know, at the time, I tell people, to me, sports or chasing any dream, you know, it's like you're trying to climb up the hill that you'll never get to the top. Or even if you do get to the top, the top is so steep, you're only there for a short amount of time somebody knock you off. Right. You know? And so when you know, you're trying to, you know, climb to the top, you're not really thinking about, I'm the top player, I'm not looking around, right. I'm just trying to be the best me that I can be, mm -hmm. and I'm still that way to this day, you know, so it's kind of hard to reflect on the past when I'm still trying to do things now, Yeah. Mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's good to, to feel the respect from others, you know, and hear nice things, and people treat you with respect and, and, and say that, you know, you had a positive influence on their life, so I'm just happy with that. But I mean, but as far as on the basketball end, you know, I guess it was pretty cool to, you know, all the time that I put in, I mean, that's all I would do, you know, was just working my craft. And I, to, 
to me, like, if you really want to be good, I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, you, you have to pretty much buy in and do it well. Mm -hmm. If you want to do something, you make a choice, and then you, you're going to do all you can do to get every advantage you can. Mm -hmm. when, when did you realize, like, you were nice? Like, for me, it took me a while because I, I was always the smallest kid. Right. I used to play against uh, Jeremy Gilchrist mm -hmm. all the time. He was my rival, one of the best players that I ever played against. Right. Respected him to the utmost, and we, we battled since, mm -hmm. like, Pop Warner days. Mm -hmm. But I really didn't know I was good until probably I got to jam. I was an average high school player. But for you, when did you know, like, all right, I'm, I'm nice? I mean, honestly, I, I credit all that to my father. My father would just always just drill that into me since I was just young. You know what I mean? Even if I would go against someone who was physically better than me, or, you know, or more advanced than yeah. me. I was, you know, before I hit my growth spurt and all that, he was just always, it's a way you can win, it's a way you can win, you know, right. cream rise to the top and mm -hmm. all this other stuff like that you always say. So he was like, you just got to figure out a way to find your niche, find your advantage, mm -hmm. you know. So, you know, on the basketball side, like if you are small, you learn how to, you know, how to shoot from the outside or have pull up jumpers or floaters, you know, you just find a way. And then when your body catches up, so I probably gained my confidence when I hit a growth spread, I was 5'9 as a freshman, 135. And then sophomore year, I was like, I grew to about 6'1. Six, six right. You know, so I, I grew a couple inches and probably put on a couple pounds, 20 pounds or so. I don't know. So, you know, I, I kind of, once I was able to kind of be physically out there with the Boston mm. Jets, it was good. But I always knew that talent wise, I was good. But, you know, in, in sports, it's all about your size and your, yeah. and your, and your you know, your yeah. athleticism. So, that's. And, and I feel free to jump in, Larry. Yeah. I, I did read an interesting stat, too, that I forgot to mention, is that your high school career, you only lost four games. Like, from sophomore, junior, senior year, only four games. I remember at Bayside, my senior year, we lost nine games. We won and nine. Do you what, – what is your, your proudest moment um, of your, your high school career? Um, just like you said, the, the, the overall consistency, you know what I mean, and, and, and just the legacy that we left here, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, a lot of times you don't know that you're a part of something special until it's over, you know what I mean? I, I never, that's the one thing about me, when I when I came back to the area and, you know, and just when people come to me with the training thing and everything, mm -hmm. and they ask me to critique my son, to critique my, this team, or what do you think, you know? And I try not to sound like a hater or nothing like that, and I'm just like, you know, but through my travels and through really understanding what's mm -hmm. going on, I just shoot it straight. I'm like, you know, they're pretty good, but you know, you just you go up to DC, it's a different world. You go, you know, you go down to Raleigh, Durham. Them boys is playing some ball. You, cause it's like, you know, we have athletes, but sometimes, you know, the exposure is not there for a lot of kids, and you know, and, and that's I think is the unfortunate thing because you go to these other areas, these metropolitan areas, they have big colleges there, so they can go to the college and see the people so they, they ain't gonna be feeling themselves they're the biggest show in town because they're the best high school player right you know mm -hmm. they go watch I me mean, luckily now we got odu doing well so you can just go to their games or norfolk state doing well you know shout norfolk state they, mm -hmm. they went last night right. but you know it, it's just those type of things that some kids they're, they're comfortable being in a you know a big fish in a small pond and that was never really my thing you know you talk about that you know i look back and we're here in the gym People, you were selling out gyms. I remember that as your senior year. <laughs> right. I mean, really selling out gyms. Mm -hmm. Who did you look up to in terms of athletes that came out of here mm -hmm. that made you say, "Oh, okay, I want to aspire to try to be like him"? I mean, guys, guys that that made it and went places and did things. You know, um, every every player that you know utilized sports and you know everything from even the music or whatever that was able to utilize their craft and go and travel and do things and, and be special, you know what I mean? So that level of focus and commitment was always something that that I admired, mm -hmm. you know? So I probably, on the basketball end, you know, Joe Smith, Iverson, of course, you know what I mean? And, you know, I watched Ronald Curry and uh, when you had Capel with them, that team they had, and, you know, the different people that you see and they look like they're good, and, you know, you just follow the, the local guys that go places and you, and you follow their careers. One of the things I thought about too was the whole recruiting scene. I never yeah. get when your dad called me and says he's gonna he's gonna make his announcement. He's gonna, he's gonna, he told me you're gonna go to NC, uh, yeah. go, to, go to Maryland yeah. over NC State and Georgetown and the other ones. When you look at social media now and the way recruiting is done, can you imagine all that you were going through at that time, right. which we thought was big, right. doing it now? Yeah, I mean it's just it's just now it's like putting. 
gasoline on a you know a fire that's been there. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? That, that the social media, you know, it's a gift and a curse. You know, everyone, you know, has a platform without really being vetted a lot of times. You know, so you know it's good because it gives a spotlight to a lot of people that would in the past fall in the cracks right. because you can put your highlight film out and so it's, you know if you're good you're going to get seen these days you know what I mean because there's so many tapes being floating around there's so much hype around so many people you know you don't have to go through the media or get voted by a committee and you know your coach may be a rival with another coach who won't vote you on a all tie water team or you know yeah. the politics right, right, right. don't really stop a lot of kids you know if you're good you're good and even here from a from an AAU scene, you know, we got Boo Williams. You know, he was like the only outlet at the time. You right. know, and now, you know, you got Team Loaded. You know, they sit, uh, you know, uh, Under Armour's down here now, and you know, you got even say Pusha T got a team. They about to start a new Adidas team with Team Push, or you know, so it's just like it's the kids. So it's, it's just, it goes both ways. It's like you're not getting the top, top, top guys on one team. Like, so we always made a strong push nationally. So, you know, the, the better players are going to different teams because they want to, you know, highlight their, their skills. Yeah. You know what I mean? But at the same time, it's more opportunity to be seen. So I, I salute anybody who gets the opportunity to get seen. Speaking of recruiting, what was it like for you? I'm sure you were recruited probably your sophomore year. Um, what was that whole process like? I, I read that uh, North Carolina State was a front runner, that mm-hmm. people thought you were going to go there first, mm-hmm. and the recruiting visits. I mean, honestly, the most surreal moment was um, I was in the ninth grade. Eighth, ninth grade. Yeah, ninth grade. Um, and we went up to a Bob Givens tournament, and mind you, I still was like small, 5'9", freshman, whatever. Now, I'll never forget Donald Hand, who was in the area. Mm-hmm. He was a was it, senior. He, he was he was like he was there at the time, and I was in ninth grade. And he, um, you know, was like you know, like you know, kind of not so much like taking me in, like come yeah. over here, like talk to me. I'm like, you know, that's a starting point guard for UVA. Mm-hmm. So I was hype, you know what I mean? Which I still, you know, look up to him and everything. But uh, you know, he was talking to me, whatever. Then they say, you know it, like, you know, the head coach at the time, they called me in the office and they offered me a scholarship. So that was the most surreal moment for me and my family. That right. was the first time, you know, in the ninth grade just to get, get that. But, you know, once again, you know, I, I just thank God for the opportunity and just for the focus and just for my family, for them even, you know, a lot of these kids I'm seeing now, they don't really have that push, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And if they yeah. want to slack off, their parents kind of be like, oh, it's all right, take a day off. Like, I didn't have that option. Right. Like, they just like, if you're going to do it, you're going to do it. Right. right. And I had, you know, it was no choice, you know. So you you took recruiting visits to, to what schools? Uh, I went to, I mean, because we did AAU, you know, we, we had a tournament out of Blooming. Uh, Blooming so I went to uh, Indiana, mm-hmm. went down to Florida. I went to, uh, my final My final five was Indiana, Florida, St. John's, NC State, and Georgetown. Um, yeah, and basically Florida, Indiana was out the, out the picture too far. Yeah. So then we got, then uh, St. John's, Jarvis, he kind of was like leaning towards his uh, guard from the Tri-State area that he mm-hmm. liked, the guy named Elijah Ingram, so he wanted to sign him, so it kind of was like, me and him was kind of, you know, it's, it's by preference, right. he was a good player. Mm-hmm. And uh, so then it was just down to the three schools that was within, you know, three, four hour drive and my family could come watch me play. And so I selected Maryland because it, it was a combination of everything. I loved the school, I loved the area. You know, I, I just I just loved everything about just the whole, mm-hmm. it, it was a, it was a can't miss, but you know, my parents wanted me to go to NC State. They, they loved their coach staff. I wanted to go to Georgetown. So it was almost right. like, Maryland was like, you know, you could, I couldn't lose, so, I, you know, Maryland was a safe bet. In Maryland, um, if I remember, they just won a national championship right. before. Mm-hmm. So stepping on campus for a, a national championship, I guess, powerhouse at the time, what, what was that like? Was the expectations greater? Um, they, they had Juan Dixon. Mm-hmm. Um, Steve Blake was a senior. Yeah, right. what, what was that like? It was surreal. I mean... You know, once again, this is the type of situation. It's just like like us living today. Mm-hmm. You never know. 
years from now, they'd be like, man, you know yeah. what y'all were doing? You'd be like, <laughs> right. we just living. You yeah, know what I'm exactly, saying? So exactly, you don't really exactly. understand mm-hmm. what's really going on. You just, you know, adapting to what's in front of you and what you got to mm-hmm. do. So stepping on that, you know, campus, you know, obviously a lot of excitement, a lot of hype, a lot of energy around it. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's just like going to, I would imagine, like going to a lot of colleges, you're excited to be there. It's a lot of people, you know what I mean? It was in a metropolitan area. Mm-hmm. So, you know, coming from here to there, it was already a change in pace of just seeing all these people and, you know, we going to the city and we, you know, it was just, yeah. it, was, it was a different, it was a different atmosphere. Right. So... You know, that's all I can really remember. And on the basketball land, I mean, everybody talked about the little fight then that they, 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 they I was going to ask, yeah, I was going to ask you about it. Yeah, that yeah. was normal. Like when you get to that level, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, this dog eat dog. So it's just yeah. like you're playing, and that's the way. That's the genius of Coach Williams. He would always have us go at each other. Like it didn't. Coach matter. Williams was there yeah, at the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, like that. That was his mo. He he recruited people with chips mm-hmm. on their shoulders. That you know, wanted to go to North Carolina, Duke, but might got picked up. Like you said. You know, the North Carolina dude, they getting the number one and number two guard, period. Right. You know what I'm saying? Number one guard, Raymond Felton, he went. Yeah. And that Dockery, he went. And that's how he was like, I didn't never think he was that great, but he was from Chicago. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So, and his father was a coach. So, he was a little bit more advanced cerebrally, like the way he played. Yeah. But physically, you know, I, I thought I had more talent. But, you know, it's, it's a lot of different things we're playing point guard. So, mm-hmm. back to the fight thing. I'm not going to harp on it too much. Yeah. But um, was it – because you thought you was better than Steve Blake, like yeah, I mean, he didn't like that. You yeah, know what I mean? sure. But yeah. you know, once again, you know that that's just the way I always approach anything. Right. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna put my best foot forward, and I'm not gonna, you know, devalue myself or, you know, the work that I put in or even my integrity for anybody. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, when you come to a, you know, a national powerhouse, and sometimes it look like you're supposed to back down, and you like, why? You know yeah. what I mean? Right. Like right. I, right. I haven't right. backed down now, and you know, physically, I faced players that are physically better than you you right. know what I'm saying yeah. it was just he was a he was a different style of player you know mm-hmm. and that was me being young and naive you know to really understand I never really understood a pass first point guard like that yeah you know mm-hmm. and you know back to like we talk about Matt Coleman you know he plays a different style than I played I was a you know if you can score a bucket go get a bucket mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. when they stop you then, you know, you just force them to, to do something about you. You make your presence felt. You know, so when I see these facilitators and, you know, these people that, you know, is averaging, you know, double digits assists and stuff like that, and they just play different. You know, they'll have an open layup and throw it out to a guy. I'll be like, why? You know what I mean? I don't right. even see the game that way. Right. 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 But right. the thing that I've realized, the older I got, is that when you get to the higher levels and the pros and all that, they love those players. Like, mm-hmm. funny story, they say Kevin Garnett, when they made the big trade to go to the Celtics. He was like, I want y'all to, you can get rid of anybody, but I want y'all to keep the African kid. He was talking about Rondo. Cause he thought he was African cause his last name. Yeah. Because he knew that he was gonna get the rock. Okay. And that's how it works. And I learned that the hard way, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Yeah. Like if they think you have, like they, you are gonna have to learn how to play a role eventually. Mm-hmm. You know, if you really want to get to the money. So if you get to a certain situation where, you know, you might go on a team, they're gonna say you can take three to five shots, right. you know what I mean? And you gotta be effective in that and do other things. And I just didn't understand how to do that because I was always a, just in positions where I could just play. Yeah. You know? So when you look at that freshman year, what did you learn about yourself going through all that? Because you were the man, you were the right. man. I mean, everywhere you go there, you get humble because you got the guys ahead of you. Yeah. Right. But you're trying to make your point as well. Exactly. You're, you're not a female, you know, yeah. I want to show I can do it too. Yeah. What did you learn about yourself during that adjustment? Um, The big thing at Maryland that I learned was just, the presentation, when you get on a bigger stage, just the way you have to conduct yourself, the way that everything's laid out, the way they want you to dress, the way they want you to, to, mm. to speak, the, you know, that was the thing. It wasn't even so much the basketball or whatever that you do, the sport is always gonna be the sport, you know what I mean? And it's, but when you get to different levels, it's just the presentation and just really the packaging is what changes. And that's what, that's yeah. what Maryland taught me. Did you know that when you were being recruited, how that was? It was like a, was it a cultural shock or? I mean, yeah, I mean, here, you know, we had, we had, you know, attention. Mm-hmm. So I knew how to cut it on and cut it off. Yeah. But, right, right. you know, there it's like 24 seven. You walk out your dorm or people, you know, saying, you know, like you said, with social media, I don't know how these guys, like you, you become insulated. Like you, right. you 
everything you do, people talking about you, just like, for what? Yeah. You move on from that, you get through that freshman year, we realize Blake's gonna be gone, and it's gonna kinda be gonna be your team. Right. Mm -hmm. Just talk about going into that season. We'll talk about the end of that season later on, but the beginning of the season, how confident did you feel going in that this was your team now? It was an opportunity, yeah. you know, it was an opportunity. That's the one thing I never, you know, I never gonna hold myself back from lack of confidence. You know what I mean? Like if you're gonna do something, you're gonna give it your best shot. If you fail, so what? Right. You know what I mean? So that's just always been my mindset even to this day. You know, I'm a I'm gonna give it my best shot. I'd rather give it a, give it my best try, not you know, not do it or whatever, fall short, than to live with the regret and be like I should have tried it. Yeah. So, you know, so going into I worked hard or whatever and I, you know, I had a year of grooming. So I just I felt like I just stepped right into it. It wasn't really that difficult. And, and let the team as a sophomore. Yeah, I mean, but it was just, you know, a lot of times opportunities happen. And sometimes you're blessed to be in a good opportunity and things just kind of just fall and, you know, happen your way, you know. What was, as far as balancing being a star point guard now your sophomore year and academics, what, what was, Take me through John Gilchrist's day. What's a typical day at the University of Maryland for a, a star point guard? I mean, to be honest with you, academically, at that time, I struggled. I mm -hmm. mean, I, I, in college, yeah. you know, in, in high school, I mean, I always had a, I could have got a 2-5 on my sleep. You yeah. Know? Like, it was, school was never really hard for me, you know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, especially as an athlete, you know that you have some people that are rooting for you, some people that don't want you to, you know, succeed even in the building of where you are, you know, so you make these relationships and you learn how to, you know, network, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And you know the teachers that are going to be, okay, we know you had a game, mm -hmm. I'll give you a little extension on this paper or whatever, you know, stuff like that. But then you got the people all, he ain't no special, he ain't no he's an athlete, you know, we all understand how that goes. Yeah. So you, you understand how to navigate that. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you get to college and it's the same probably, but times 10 though, like at that level, <laughs> right. it, 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 was, it was different. You know, it, it was different. But so that's the reason I passed, but all of the outside distractions, you know, was, 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 was the thing that was the hardest thing for me. Like I said, I was in the biggest city of, of college with 20, between 20 and 30,000 people. You know what I mean? Everybody patting on your back. So that, that right there was, was, was my biggest thing. And you know, like I had a baby. You know, what I mean that that my sophomore year, so it was it was a lot of yeah, you know, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was a lot of yeah. like, experimenting going on basically. I think for me too. So like I said, I transferred in, and um, we had two senior running backs mm -hmm. that were all conference the year before, right. and um, one got hurt, one got suspended, right. and I got thrust into the starting lineup. Right. And next thing you know, my name is everywhere. Right. I'm in the paper. People right. call me to interview me. And during the season, I was good because I'm focused on the next game. Right. But after the season, I had time to reflect. Right. And that ego right. started to get big. Right. Everybody inviting me to parties. Right. I'm getting free drinks. And right. nobody told me how to handle success. Mm -hmm. And it was a, it started to become a drug. Right. Like, like for you, everybody know you you next up. Right. What, what was that like? Is John Gilchrist, come over here, sign this, give me this. I mean, basically, that's the main thing that I, I talk about to everybody that listens to me now. You know, the more success, the more down to earth you have to be. Yeah. Mm. yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's crazy because I was always thinking when you become the man, you can pretty much do what you want to do, mm -hmm. you know, but it's the opposite. Mm. It's like once, once you get more spotlight, that's the more critique that you receive. Right? Yeah. So. You know, that is the thing that I've learned. So even, you know, now, you know, for you guys to bless me an opportunity to even, you know, talk to you guys, you know, to me it's just, it's, it's a, I'm like, you're so humble. I'm just like, it's just an honor because at the end of the day, for someone to even, you know, think anything of you, it's just like, okay, cool. You know what I mean? But it's not, it's, it's something I kind of shy away from because like I said, you know that it can become a drug if you, if you really buy into it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like how you make people, feel of people, you know, people get excited or what, or you inspire people, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And that's that's fine, but at right. the end of the day, that doesn't change who you are. You yeah. still need to stay on your own vision, right. you know what I mean? You say that, and then we talk about the AC tournament, the sophomore year. <laughs> MVP of the tournament. Right. 
everything that was going on, you up to, up to number one, number two, number right. three C. How do you remember? How do you do that after that? Because I know it's gonna be crazy yeah. after the ACC I mean, tournament. You know, that's that's probably the thing that changed my life. You know, seeing how people. The way they treat you is just like a total 360. <laughs> yeah, I bet. And it always turns like it just people. It's like they're hot and cold. You know, fans are hot and cold. You know, so going through that has changed my life in regards that it really made me understand you have to make the main thing the main thing. You know what I mean? It just one step out the other. You have to. You know what I mean? Because the crowd they're gonna cheer sometimes. They're gonna boo. Mm -hmm. But you know what I mean? At the end of the day, you still, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, what I've learned through everything I've been through is that you can't really worry about people liking you. All, you know, you, you don't really, I'm not trying to do things for people's acceptance. Mm -hmm. I just want you to respect me. At the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? So that's just what it is. You know but, what I mean? Nobody's perfect, you know, whatever, so. I, I know you're, you're being real humble right now, right? But y'all kind of struggled your sophomore year, and then you get to the tournament, and you turn this dog on. Like, you, you played CP, CP3, yeah. JJ Reddick, Luau Dang, and still to this day, they rank, that's one of the best ACC tournament performances on. Um, what, what was your mindset I mean, during my, that whole run? My mindset, honestly, and that's, you know, the gift and the curse of me as a point guard, really, as a scoring point guard. I was always, you know, my, my roots of playing was playing one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. It's playing against whoever, you know, 21. You're playing, so, you know, in those type of games, you're gonna score, you're gonna win at any cost. You're just gonna just go get a bucket, yeah. you know? So when you, you know, like I said, playing point guard, you play with different coaches. So if I, anytime I'm in a situation where it's just like, all right, just go do your thing. Yeah. You know, that, that was my most comfortable role. You know what right, I mean? Right, like, right. all right, go. Mm -hmm. you know, when they say go, I can go. Then, you know, it's like I just went, you know, because they needed that at that time. Right. You know what I mean? But that's the hardest thing playing point guard because you always have to, you know, it's an adjustable role. You mm -hmm. know, sometimes they want you to play like this. Sometimes they want you to do this. This coach wants you to play like this. So it's always like you got to keep shifting gears. Yeah. Yeah. And that tournament, they just, you know, we were down. Once we got down, they said, we just, whoever can step up and score, score. I was like, well, I can you, score. You turned the dog <laughs> on, though. That's I, was yeah. like, I was like, I can yeah. score. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I've always averaged, you know, 20 points. So mm -hmm. it's just like it wasn't really, it wasn't anything different. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I was just playing like I played when I was younger. You know what I mean? But. How soon did you go? You go I mean, because that's a time in your life where it's probably one of the best time of your life in terms of basketball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you look at that, how often do you go back and say, man, I did that? I mean, it's, it's, the scoring total that you have for the three games is one of the best in Maryland history and in the ACC tournament as well. Do you think back to that a lot? Just, I mean, not being cocky or nothing, yeah. but just saying, wow, I did that. I mean, to be completely honest, not really. Wow. You know, because <laughs> once again, you know, <laughs> Funny show. I never want to be one of them guys that you see on TV walking around in a Letterman jacket. Back in high <laughs> right, school, yeah. I was just, da, 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 prom, yeah. but I was the prom queen with the prom right, queen, right. and I was this and that. Right, right. That was never mm -hmm. my intention. Yeah. So that's why I never really speak retroactively. You know what I mean? Like I pretty much, you know, I'm always trying to be forward thinking, and you know, because when you know hindsight is 2020. So every time I think about the highlights, I think about my mistakes. And I'm, I'm, I'm very harsh on myself with that, you know what I mean? So it really eats me up when I keep thinking back and I'm like, man, I should have did this different, did, you know, then like, so I just try not to even, you know what I mean? Like, was, was this there? And that's, that was a time and a memory and a, you know, a blessing, really. It just, yeah, it just man, felt man. like it was a blessed opportunity to be in that space mm -hmm. and to experience that of feeling like a champion, you know, because a lot of people, they don't understand that feeling, and I feel that feeling sticks with you throughout life. You know yeah, what I mean? Right, when right. you've accomplished something in your life, you know, you know, all right, if I work hard, then another opportunity can come around, mm -hmm. and I can feel like I've won another yeah. championship in life. Well, I talk about you a lot, man. I've been the whole time. I'm like, look at my boy, look at the what are you doing? Right. And, and when I saw that, it was just like, it, it was good to see. Whenever we had people, you know, 7 by 7 is, right. we have a lot of athletes right. here. When right. you see that, you want to recognize them, right. let people know, right, man. Right, right, man, right. when just seeing you go through that was like, can you do it again? Yeah. Can you do it again? <laughs> and uh, man, it was amazing. It was amazing. Appreciate so you. I did a lot of talking for you, just so you know. <laughs> I appreciate did a lot of talking for you, bro. Well, so now you had a, a, a Kimball Walker-like performance. Mm -hmm. Like we probably haven't seen that in a while since then. Um, and you at the highest of the high. Mm -hmm. Why? Why not? 
go to the draft. I wasn't even thinking about it. You wasn't? Nah, I mean, mm. honestly, okay. I was just playing back. Like, that's, that's the thing that mm. a lot of people didn't even realize about me at the time. I loved college. Did you? Okay. I loved college. Like, it was just, you know, I was playing basketball. I had no worries. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you on scholarship, I won't pay for Like you say, you going out, you having fun. Like, it was just, I didn't really, wasn't really thinking about anything. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And when all that talk started circulating, I was just like, I was never even thinking about it. And, you know, understanding the business now, I might have would have, you know, put more thought into it, but even still, I was always just like, well, you know, it's whatever. I stay another year because I, I don't want to really want to leave college because I'm not ready for the mm -hmm. <laughs> the business world like that. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, you give me a million dollars, I probably something bad going to happen. I don't yeah. know what, you know what I mean? Yeah. I couldn't say no to anybody. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I had no filter, no couldn't say no to anybody. And I still was like green to all of that. So, you know, that being able to shield myself away from people was really, that was tough. Yeah. You know? were, were scouts coming <coughs> to talk to you during that time? Yeah, or? I mean, you know, scouts yeah. watching everything like that. And, you know, once again, all they're going to do is critique. You yeah. know what I mean? So when, I, when the spotlight gets on you, that's when they really start picking your game apart, mm -hmm. you know. So that's kind of how uh, my junior year was. You know, sophomore year was, was a shock. You know, I got on the scene. Junior year, you know, expectations. I was, I was on everyone's scout report. So, yeah. you know, they playing me different. Mm -hmm. I'm going to games. And then, like, I had, I had injured my wrist, like, you know, a couple of games this season. Like, I don't know. I, I went up, some kid, like, undercar, I was playing North Carolina. I forget. I went up, and they always taking charges. So, like, I landed on my wrist. Mm -hmm. And I, I like my wrist was like messed up, you know what I'm saying? So I was playing with that for a little while, but you know. So speaking of the wrist injury, did Coach Gary Williams not believe that you were really hurt? It was. A, or, I mean, honestly, man, when when it comes down to that that level of business mm -hmm. and me understanding what's really going on when you're dealing with millions and millions of dollars, yeah. mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Players become pieces to a bigger puzzle. It, it's not about you as the player anymore. So that's why they talk about NCAA. I mean, you look at Zion Williams, obviously he's on a whole nother planet. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying, like, the players are, you know, expendable in the NCAA landscape. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? These mm -hmm. these coaches are making a million, two million dollars, three million dollars, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so their thing is to get as many wins over the long haul. So obviously, if I'm a prize player on the team, you want to keep the players as long as possible. And that's kind of how it works. You have two kind of coaches when you really watch it. You got the coaches that be like, all right, I want to get these one and dones so I can attract more high level players, you know what I mean? Which, you know, because Coach, cause Coach K was known for trying to keep his guys long. Yeah, yeah. Then when he started right, turning right, the one yeah. and dones, because right. they say he was losing the recruiting battle to uh, Calipari. Mm -hmm. So he said, I'm going to take the Calipari model. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's, it's, just, it's just business at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? So as a player, you got to look out for your best interests, you and your family, and the coaches in the university, everybody's looking out for their bottom line. Yeah, hey, I was thinking about that as well. So your sophomore year was like this. I mean, way up there. Mm -hmm. Then junior year, you're thinking, oh my goodness, maybe I should have left. I mean, how often did I pick, pick as, as, you know, the, the uh, criticism yeah, and, sure. you know, Gary, your relationship with him yeah. and the losing. I mean, just right. think, man, maybe I should have went. I mean, honestly, it, it was, it was certain things didn't fall into place, you know, and I'm not the type of person, you know, I, I'll, I'll take I'll take my loss, you know what I mean? So I, I'm not gonna sit here and I'll never point my finger at certain things because I was always taught to say, what more could I have done differently? You know what I mean? But I mean, to be completely honest with you, that next year, you know, the league got better and we pretty much stayed the same. You know, we, we lost a key component, you know, a guy, Jamar Smith. So when, when, he, when he left, I mean that left a, a big hole, you know, in, in our in our team. You know what I mean? And uh, you know, and that's just on the inside. And nobody really cares about you know what happens. Just yeah. like you, you, it can happen like that from season to season. You know, like you said, injuries, anything can happen. And so in a situation like that, people are always going to try to find a why. You know what I mean? That's just the nature of sports. We always looking for a storyline. You know, and they're always like, so what's going on? What's happening? What you know? And that's when they start, you know. What's going on? And that's when the story starts speculating and this and that. And it's just, you know what I mean? So at the end of the day, the, the next year, things didn't really, you know, materialize like it did, where it was supposed to have. And 
you know, looking back on it, I could I could have handled situations differently and kept my composure and kept my demeanor a different way. But you know, at the end of the day, I was a kid, and that was something that really has stuck with me for the rest of my life to really understand, just to keep my eye on the big picture. They, they made it seem like you were like a head case, though. Right. Like, what, mm -hmm. what was, if you can give me like some details, what was those blow ups like? Was it like you, you just snapping off, or? It was, it was, it's like you're playing a game, I, I could score the ball, mm -hmm. and you're saying be a facilitator on a team that we had scoring deficiencies. So, I mean, at the end of the day, it, w it wasn't any more than a, a, a difference in ideology in, in basketball. It wasn't even nothing more than that. And that's right. what people was like, you know, once again, they try to make, you know, it's gonna, mm -hmm. someone's gonna be a fault, yeah. you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. when, I, when I went through that, I realized, okay, this is how it is, you know what I mean? And there's, like you said, this is before social media mm -hmm. and things that, you know, really gave players a light. So the power of the pen from the, you know, the, the media was heavy, right. you know what I mean? In Washington, D.C., they have a, a heavy media circuit there. So, you know, if they turn on you or whatever, yeah. then, you know, you're going to get black. I didn't, oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't think about that. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah. You know, all it takes is a couple articles come out mm -hmm. and people really believe that. And it's just like, okay, you know what I mean? I, I mean, how, how do you deal with something like that when people talking about you and it's not who you are and kind of assassinating your character? Like, what does that do? I straight up pulled a day Chappelle with no seeds. <laughs> I mean, to be honest with you, I mean, it was, to me, that's why people be like, man, that's, that's how you feel, look so refreshed and joy. Like, the time I was going that stuff, it was just so much BS. You know, mm -hmm. I went away, I kind of like was just able to, get away from all the noise and just I played basketball like everything was stripped back down to you know I felt like I was in high school again you know what I mean I was just playing ball you know I had enough money in my pocket to do what I wanted to do and it wasn't really a lot of hoopla around me so going overseas honestly was, was a huge blessing for me. You had the draft that came up after your junior year you leave mm -hmm. How surprised were you that you didn't get drafted? Especially uh, with all the skills you had. And I look again, I look at the players who also got drafted, I'm thinking, huh? I mean, to be honest with you, it crushed me. It crushed me because even on top of that, I had a great Chicago camp. Like, I had a great Chicago camp. It's a combine, like yeah, the combine? Yeah, I had a, like a great combine. Mm -hmm. Like, they had me on the, on the commercial, like, I'm, you know, like, of the, of the draft. Mm -hmm. Like, it was like, yo, like, you solidified mm -hmm. it, you know what I mean? We ain't talking about second rounds. Like you played yourself to the first round. And so when it when it happens and you start seeing it, mm -hmm. and it's just like when you're in that moment, you're like, wow, this is really happening. Like watching it on TV. Yeah, it's just like you see it and you just like, this is this is it was a surreal moment. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's when you realize the business. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like and. So, you know, once again, like, you know, it's all entertainment, yeah, you yeah. know, so you're going to make the good guys, you're going to make the villains, you know, and so that's just, it made me understand the power of perception mm -hmm. from then on. And you, you know, we watch the, the NFL draft and we, we see the NBA draft and we see the looks. I always feel like, sorry for those guys who are in that, that green room and their name yeah. is a call. Yeah. So, I mean, you're sitting there watching the draft thinking, okay, they just told me I was going to be a first round pick and it's going, it's going, it's going, it's like, I mean, it, you know, everything is subjective, you know what I mean? So, you know, people going to tell you what you want to hear, you know what I mean? So, but like I said, talent-wise, I, I knew the body I work, the body of work I had put in. Yeah. And, you know, at the end of the day, I, it just made me just fully realize that the game is bigger than just myself. So, yeah, that's all that was. How so, humbling. <laughs> humbling, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. It's definitely humbling. I mean, that's. That's life for you. Life mm -hmm. gonna humble you one way or another. Mm -hmm. So I'm just glad that I went through it then rather than being one of these cases of guys who, you know, was, people really thought you was on top of the world and you lost it all. And people were like, man, you, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just either way, you know what I mean? I, I felt like God always put me in a situation because if I'm not ready for it, you know, or if it's not right for me, then things happen the way it's supposed to happen. That's a good perspective. Um, but during that time, did you have any kind of like um, go through depression or stress or anxiety or what? I mean, like I said, like I, I was, I was, um, I was depressed, you know, on the basketball end because at that point, you know, 
I have been doing it for so long and the people that I have befriended and everything, such so much of my identity was wrapped up in basketball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and and that's what a lot of it was just like people were like, wow, what was good? They were more hurt than I was. Because to me, honestly, it was almost like, you know, all the stuff going around, I just wanted to play ball. Like yeah. that's when I had the, you know, the joy and then on top of that I always wanted to travel. Mm -hmm. So that was another thing. You know what I mean? So people were like, oh league, league, league. And I was like league, 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 because I was like, okay, this is a a, a place of I feel finally be validated, you know, with everybody around yeah. me, like I'll be validated. Yeah. But it wasn't just like that's all I knew to that was the mountaintop from what I knew, you know what I mean? But once again, one of the biggest blessings in the skies was when I went overseas, I was able to really step back away from everything and I just found myself. Like I read mad books, I'm traveling in Jerusalem, I went to Israel, I was so it you was crazy. You in a good place. Hold on, I'm, I'm gonna come back to that for a second. Yeah. But I want to go back to the point where you feel validated because, yeah. mm -hmm. as youngsters, you play the game because you enjoy it, right? Yeah. And it's, it's just a joy. But when people notice that you have a talent, mm -hmm. and they put you on this pedestal, mm -hmm. and you got to be this certain mm -hmm. thing, and then you feel like you let people down right. when you're not that right. thing. Right. I, I, I've been through it. Right. Like my family, like, all right, when we when we get here, right. we are gonna do this. Right. Buy your auntie a house. Right. Buy your right. mama this. Right. And then you know right. what I'm saying. Right. And, yeah. And, yeah. and you feel like. Like, Unnecessary. Yeah, pressure, and I, I kind of knew right. in my mind, like, I, I don't, it doesn't matter to me, right. but I feel like I let so many people right. down. Right. And so I'm sure that's that's what you felt. But you say you go to Israel, you kind of might find yourself. Yeah. You're in a good place. Yeah. Forget what everybody else right. thinks because it's your right. life. Right. And so I read that in, your, in you finding yourself, right, mm -hmm. you wrote Coach Gary Williams and mm -hmm. your assistant coach, Dave Dickerson, mm -hmm. a letter. You say you did regret mm -hmm. not coming back for your senior year. Mm -hmm. But people don't humble themselves like yeah. that. And that's what I admire about you because you didn't take the blame. Right. You know what I mean? You wrote them a letter and they were surprised right. when they got the letter. Can you talk I mean, anything? Once again, I mean, a lot of times, you know, when you have a lot of noise, it's like us having this conversation right here. But then you imagine we trying to have a conversation. You got 15, 20 people at the table talking across the table. You know, that's how, you know how it yeah, gets. Yeah. So like, it becomes like that. So. I can't get my message to you or you when there's so many mixed mm. messages going on. Right. So, and that's just how it was. I had people in my head and like, you know, like you said, the media writing this and they hearing I'm saying mm. stuff and it was just a bunch of foolishness, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, you know, sometimes you step outside of yourself. So when I was able to, you know, quiet the noise and kind of, you know what I mean, sit back and reflect and was really thankful for all the opportunities that they did provide for me, yeah. you know what I mean? I was just like, that was cool, you know what I mean? Mm. 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 That's awesome. How was when he responded back to you, and then I know you guys came back together. Just talk about that. How what was it like, you know, coming back together and talking with him? Yeah, I mean, it just it just made me understand the business. Mm -hmm. It just made me understand the business. You know what I mean? Just like I felt I had to do what I had to do. The same thing with him. You know what I mean? Like he's not gonna have a player that's gonna seem like a wild card that's outside of the brand of what they're trying to do. You know what I mean? Like in the, the day, no one's bigger than. The brand. I mean, imagine you build something from the ground up. You got somebody coming in, you know, that's using that platform, but it's not really in line with the, you know, what I mean, with what, you, what you're doing. You know, so that's kind of how. You know, I know there's a lot of things that it was customary of how people did, and I would, you know, deviate from the play sometime, and you know, stuff like that. You know, but that's the way I saw the game. I would improvise, and you know, that that's just what it was. But at the end of the day, those those years and those experiences. And even with the, you know, they, they gave me a um, exonerated eligibility fund, so I, I was able to go back and you know get my you know college education paid for, and they, they still. They did that. Yeah, that's yeah. tight. I, yo, I, I never heard of that. Yeah, before. yeah, like so. I mean, actually, I went back. I went back 2015. Did right, right, you? 2016. Mm -hmm. 2016 um, through 17. I went back in the uh, spring semester. I went in spring. And I went uh, winter session. I went in the fall, 2017. I graduated. I graduated. That's tight. Yeah. So we talked about yeah. that. You said yeah. that you were gonna be going back for that to get that degree. You had, it had to feel great because a lot of kids we know mm -hmm. they leave school with right. nothing. Right. The school uses them, and they right. have nothing to show for it. To get that degree, what did that mean to you and to your family as well? I mean, it, it, it just showed a, a, a maturation process for myself. Yeah. To really understand. What a lot of kids don't understand at the time, you know, we we, we talked back to the, the young man we were talking about earlier, how they already have that, 
you know, when you come from a family that they already have that mindset, education is always the mm -hmm. pillar mm -hmm. that you're going to keep a job. You know right, what I mean? Right, like, right. you're not going to go hungry or broke. If you, you know, keeping those things, you keep, you know, you got that education. You can't even, you can't check your highest level of education on a box. You know, some people don't even have high school. Yep, so if you, if you ain't getting a call for an interview. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So now your choices of how to make money is just, you're just cutting your own stuff off. And that's what I preach to the kids now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you, you got to understand, like, you know, you got to utilize the game. For the doors that it can open it's just like yes. the key you know it opens doors you you're able to do this you're mm -hmm. able to do that but at the end of the day you know that's just it is what it is what would you say though how do you do that we, we say it a lot like mm -hmm. you got to use the game like that's what it is right but being being in that moment right when you got so much going on i right. gotta go weight lift and gotta watch film right i gotta go to practice right. and you, you you telling me to go back to my dorm room and study right. how do you keep that perspective i mean honestly it's all about it's all about guidance for real yeah you know yeah. It's, it's 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 you can tell the people because all kids it's like having a child if you have a child you tell them to go to bed because you got school in the morning a child ain't gonna do right. it if yeah. unless you make them do it mm -hmm. so the kids even the kids that i knew that came from their parents was like i was on a team with people that you know, roll the bench, but they really won't tripping because they had a, a job set up or they, you yeah. know what I mean? They doing the other, so they already had a different mindset. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, you know, me, I'm thinking my path is basketball and, you know, they just on the team and we going out to, they shaking every hand. They, oh, you know what that is? That's such, like, they, they playing <laughs> right. a different yeah, game. Yeah, 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 they yeah, playing yeah. a different game, oh, yeah. you know what oh, yeah, I mean? Yeah. So I, when I really was able to come back to the table and understand what they were doing, I was like, wow. Did you realize that in college or? No, when I went back. Like, when you I, went you back, know, okay. Once I just realized, you know, like once again, you know, you have the game and you have the money people and you have the people, for one, you have the fans. Mm -hmm. So they're the ones that's buying the tickets, that's, you know, that's supporting you, that's mm -hmm. actually, that, that you know, that, that's giving you that platform. Mm -hmm. And then you have the boosters and you know, mm -hmm. the, the, you know, the political side mm -hmm. comes in. You know what I mean? And so it's everything. You know what I mean? You have the media, you got the sponsors. Like everything has to be aligned. You know what I mean? So when you start messing with the money or you start making it, you know what I mean? Something's going to happen. You know what I mean? That, yeah. That's the politics in sports. You know, and, and you said it so well. You wish you could go back and, and go back and say, oh, if I knew all that then, right. what I know now. Right. You hear people say that all the time. It could have been a whole different a whole different right. thing. But you went through that for a reason, exactly. and now you realize that. Exactly. And, exactly. and you'll be able to share it with other kids. What, what do you try to tell some of these young athletes? I mean, I know you work with athletes now. What do you try to tell them now about your story uh, of wh where you are now? And do you feel like they're listening as well? Yeah, I mean, because the thing about me is, I'm, I'm transparent, right. you know, and the one thing, you know, I, I don't try to glorify anything. I don't try to, you know, whatever. I just shoot it straight with people. And even if they don't want to hear it, you know, they they come back and always be like, man, I understand what you were saying now. Yeah. You know, so yeah, yeah. I don't go out of my way. So it's either you're going to receive what I'm saying or you're going to understand and then you're going to be like, what, you know, but you put yourself in a situation. So, you know, the people that I've worked with closely, and that have had success are people that have, you know, actually like, all right, it's kind of like you said with a child. They don't understand why they're doing it, but they trust in the process. And then they, they say, you know, they start seeing the results. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, okay, you I know what I mean? Yeah, that's so, okay. so that, that that's basically, you know, how it goes. And to be honest with you, I talk to a lot of people, but I really don't like take my time out and really mentor and train as many people. Like, that's when it comes to another level, because that's when I'm literally give you all the all the keys you know what i mean i'm telling you like you know it's just like having a parent that played you know what i mean or whatever and they know so that's just what it is sitting here now if um if you were across from your 18 year old self what would you tell john gilchrist the 18 year old john gilchrist <laughs> That's a great question. I don't know if really, really thought of that. Um, probably just just take everything in stride. You know, at the end of the day, I feel like you know, in the time when I was finding myself, and everything, I feel like that's the key to life. You know, just as long as you happy and you satisfied, you know what I mean. You you, you gotta always keep your priorities in order. 
you know, because at the end of the day, all we have is our sanity. Yeah. For real. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So you're trying to do things to, you know, you're spreading yourself thin and doing things that aren't really about anything at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because you're trying to actually live up to the hype or live up to other people's expectations. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes, a lot of times, you know, as, as you just said, it, 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 it consumes you. So I would just, I would just touch on that. You know what yeah. I mean? But I would more so have to mentor someone like me. I couldn't just talk. Like you gotta actually gotta have somebody to like, you know, because like when you're in the spotlight, little mistakes turn into big mistakes. They, they get blown up, you know what I mean? So that's the thing, like you gotta, it's like walking on the landmine, like when you're trying to do certain things, cause you got people, you got the FBI tapping your phone. Like they, 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 they watching everything. Mm, yeah. Like when you, when they bought to invest a million dollars in you, like they, they get private investigators, they come on your campus, you know, this guy, was he a partier? You know, what, what was he doing, woo woo? You know what I mean? So you can't be no regular student. That's Have you why seen that? Like when you were, you don't see it. You don't they, see they, it. They, they, they proud of us. That's right. why they proud. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but right, you right, know, right, right. you know they gonna get the back. Like that's what they do. You know what I mean? And I didn't really understand it to that degree. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, I was thinking once again, I'm in college. I'm gonna go and try to have my phone in college. Then I'm gonna, you know, whatever. Yeah, and yeah. Just, you making a bad name for yourself. So you going in, you know, to college. Like I'm going into boom. If I'm handling this, like handling my business. Mm. It's business, you know, and and that has stuck with me, you know, throughout my life. Like when I go to work, now I'm just like, hey, you know what I mean? Like, cause I already know. That's hard to do as an 18, 19 year old. Like I, I, mean, I you, went to college and party. Like you, you, I want to have. You asked me what yeah, I would no. tell. <laughs> no, I you get you. That, 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 that's what I, I was saying. Yeah, and I wish somebody would have told me that too. Like, but you wonder if you even listen. You know what I mean? Nah, you, you, you would hear it. Yeah. But are you really listening? Yeah. And that's the thing. I mean, because you're like you said, you're in that time. It's mm -hmm. supposed to be the best time of your life. It is. And it's, it's hard to be. But it got it for an athlete. Definitely yeah. on, on your scale. You got it. it does it's have to be business, business, man. Yeah. It's a it's yeah. a business, and that's the thing that once again, once I start to be able to put those lens on and really see mm. things make sense. You know what I mean? Like people talk about with the AB situation. You know, with, with, with the Steelers and, and this and that, and oh man, he this and that. Woo -woo. You know, they, they ain't trying to give him more than a one year deal with the guaranteed money. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, man, I'm risking my body and I'm the best receiver. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, people start doing stuff like, you know, everybody start looking out for their own interests and things start becoming more clear. You like, this is what's going on. And when you get caught up in the hype, Sometimes it makes you do things that is not a business move, you know. So at the end of the day, if you make the business move, usually that's yeah. nine times ten the, 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 the best move long term. What do you think is the biggest mistake John Gilchrist made during that time? I mean, business-wise, either I would have left sophomore year, which mm. which I. Personally, didn't feel that I was ready to play, but at mm. least I would have got the first rookie contract in, or I would have stayed senior year, would have been more mature, and you know, mm. granted I didn't get hurt, yeah. and would have been able to at least stick on, you know what I mean, as a as a pro because I knew that I was solid enough player to be a pro. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, just just that basically. But you know, at the end of the day. My, my gift as a player was also my curse. I was a I was an improv. So when I played basketball, I never really tried to play in the confines of, yeah, I'm in the confines of the line, but that's when I let my imagination go. Yeah. Right, 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 so right, when right. you get into, you know, you have this, you know, imagine just go out there and paint, and then, then you start getting a technical drawing, and they like, all right, draw this way with this hand, you know, mm -hmm. with this brush, and you just like, oh, you good, you good. So that it just gets to that point, and you be like, what? You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like yeah, stuff yeah, just starts yeah. just changing on you. Now, if you look at the the scale now, I I, I don't know much about it, but you got a, a Russell Westbrook mm -hmm. score for his mm -hmm. point guard, mm -hmm. Kemba Walker. You know what I mean? Do you think if you were in this era, it'd be different for you in your I in mean, your game? It's a lot of guys that can fill it up. You know, mm -hmm. and excuse me, that that's the thing. Like these guys, a lot of times those guys that get to that level are great teammates, they're really humble, you know, 
Or if they do have an ego, they know how to suppress it around the right people. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's, yeah. business. it's a business. Yeah. It's a business. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the thing about those guys. It's a business. Mm -hmm. And I realized that when I was around, like you said, some of these guys that got drafted, like, we all hung out. Like you said, we party. But, like, you know what I mean? You'll see them at the game, and they were like, hey, what's up, what's up? You know what I mean? Like, I you. you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like, yo, what, what you want? You like, like what do you want? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you acting differently, mm. you know? But, you know, they, you know, and I never forget, like, J.J. Reddick, for example. Like, he's one of the first people that I saw that, you know, he was just like, you know, when you come in, like, he'll dress like, you know, dress up. You know, he was like, you ain't go to a job interview in no sweat suit. Like, that's, he, he, he was already ahead of the game mentally. And then he was already approaching like that. So, that, that's the reason why I say some people get it mentally. Yeah. And, you know. And you play with JJ, played against him. I mean, you knew him the whole time. Saying. And to see him still in the league, he knew how to do, he knew how to follow the business plan. Conduct his business. I got, I got, business. I got one more question. Um, so, if I ask you, what does the athlete student mean to you? What would you say? So the play on words, athlete student, like different than student athlete, how they try to, okay. Yeah. Um, to me, I'd say, I mean, speaking for, you know, minorities, especially mm -hmm. when in our culture, we put a lot of emphasis on sports, you know. I mean, we love it, it's a form of entertainment. So I would just say of the mindset of people who value it, I ain't going to say more than what it's worth because, but it's just like, the, that's kind of how I would put it, yeah. for lack of better words, you know what I mean? It's a lot of people that, you know, I speak to, to today, you know, and they really don't have a plan beyond what someone yeah. already yeah. sets in front of them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, well, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a play ball and woo. And I'm, I'm gonna go. Somebody gonna somebody gonna give me a shot. Somebody who is that somebody? What what are you doing to 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 you know? Because at the end of the day, that's in, once again a business model. People are only gonna pay you, only gonna give you what you worth. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Of like, so if nobody else is checking for you, then be like, why? Well, why well, I gotta up the price? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you gotta build your own brand and build your own leverage. So when people try to get at you, you be like, man, I don't got no time for that. They like, wow, well, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's yeah, when they up yeah. it. Yeah. So that's the that's the whole point. Like you gotta make yourself valuable to the point where they're gonna be like, all right, well. You know, we know that he ain't, we ain't gonna give us the time of day because he got. I know he got this and that going on. And they 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 want him, so we gonna come with a better. Like it's just yeah, that's how it go. So I just feel people that who don't understand that or don't have the the mindset to do that. What are you doing now? Oh, I'm uh, coaching coaching over at Tallwood. Uh, they they just interviewed they just interviewed me for yesterday. So. I don't know, I'll probably end up there or um, another school around here coaching this year. Um, make, making my making my ways in the AU scene, probably uh, go go the grad assistant route. Mm -hmm. You know, get, get on one of these college benches and stuff like that. You know what I said? Just right now, just teaching. You got, got to teach special ed, you know yeah. what I mean? Okay, okay. So teaching, okay. teaching high school, coaching. Mm -hmm. And got different little things that I'm dibbling, dabbling in, trying to, you know, on the, the Trying, trying to create re residual income. Yeah. You know what I'm okay, saying? Okay, so, okay. you know, just trying, trying to put things in, put things in place right now. Yeah. So. Man, it was an honor, yeah, man. I learned yeah, so yeah. much, bro. <laughs> like seriously, <laughs> I learned a yeah, lot, man. Hey, man. I appreciate you oh, yo, coming day, out and doing man. this, man. Yeah. Life, yeah. brother. Yep. Yeah. Man, I, I had no idea. Yeah. I mean, you, you learned so many things. I think you learned more through your mistakes, than Yeah, yeah. you do. You seen it all and, time. And, yeah. seen it all the yeah. time. And that's the thing too, though. Um, we can't be too shy to share it. Right, 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 right. Because right. it can help somebody else down yep. the line. Yeah, like absolutely. You, you know, you, there'll be some of, those, some of the kids who are coming up that you, you'll coach. Be like John Gifford, right? But they don't realize, and they start looking. Oh mm -hmm. man, he did this, and then yeah. they start asking questions about what yeah. could I do. You know what I mean? Honest with you, right now, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to financial literacy. What I'm on right now. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm really, I'm really like, I, I got my first investment property, like. Two years ago. Okay. okay. Oh, that's like yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah. I mean, like I got a little townhouse or whatever, and just rent it. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm about to, I'm about to go hard with that. Yeah. I'm about, I'm about to go hard with that. Man, now you, you, you got a fan in me for life. Man. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Yeah.